Welcome everybody, this is John Burra from MammothInteractive.com. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make an app for the iPhone in minutes. But before we do that, I want to make sure that you guys all know that there is a free 10-hour course in the description here. This is a course that teaches you learn to learn how to code, and I hope that you go and take this course because I spent a lot of time putting it together to make sure that it is as efficient as possible, and this 10-hour course, again, is 100% free. So first things first, you need to go into Xcode, and if you don't have Xcode, well, you can always download it from the App Store right here. So once you have Xcode open, let's go ahead and end the single view application, and we'll call this a simple name app for iPhone. I always give it a uh, production number when I am prototyping. Prototyping is building apps as quickly as can. I highly recommend that you do this as often as possible if you want to become a really good developer. Okay. So first things first is you have this program here and what happens now is you need to go into the main storyboard. The main storyboard is where we drag our elements visually onto the screen here. So first things first is we're going to go and we're going to click this background here so you can see that it is highlighted blue and then what we're going to do is we're going to change the size all the way to iPhone 5.5 inch that way it will run on the simulator here and we we will cover in a different tutorial how to actually go and make sure that all of your iPhone sizes work or your iPhone designs work on all iPhones. So first things first is what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and I'm going to go into the filter here and grab in a text field and this is where we the user can input their name. So what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how to transfer a name from the text field all the way down into a label. Okay, Let's click the background and we're going to change the background color to lead. Gives it a nice dark background. Lead isn't a hundred percent black, it's a really dark gray and that always looks good. Click the label again, go to the border style and we will click and scroll down as much as you can to the background and we'll make the background mercury. Again, not quite a white but very close here. So you can see that we have 90% if you click on the grayscale slider. Let's go ahead and let's change that to 95. Okay, Not quite white, just an off-white. Gives it a little bit of an oomph. So let's go to the font here and let's click custom. This will give us a custom font. Choose your favorite font. Mine is Futura and we'll give it a size. Something like 50 might be pretty good. All right, there we go. Placeholder text will give the name of the text. So for example, it will say enter name. It will give the user a it will give the user something to enter here. Now, 50 might be a bit too much. You can always change that here. So let's go back down to 40 here. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to add in a cool button. Now, the button will go and we'll add in here and we will drag this out. Now, you can see that there's these blue lines that show up. What those are is those are rulers and you should always work with those rulers. It's what Apple gives you to make your app not only look good but function well too. So what we're going to do is we're going to change the font to custom font and let's make it Futura, any font you wish and we'll maybe make this something like 50 and I kind of like that color so let's go ahead and instead of calling a button we'll call this print name okay now we could give it some kind of background color so let's go ahead and let's do that let's hop into the crayon box and well maybe we could give it a orange background that doesn't look too bad except the blue now doesn't look very good so what we'll do is we'll change it to lead and that will give it kind of a make sure it's actually lead and it it will give it kind of a, a, it looks like it cuts out the texture. And I always like that look. And if you want to, you can make the text so big, maybe make it something like 70, that what it does is the name, okay, you can see that it's getting a little bit too big here, but the, what you could do is you could make it so that it does indeed move out 
and it kind of blends in with the background. It's just a design choice. This works well. Now what we need to do is add in a label. Okay, let's go ahead and let's add in that label. And what we'll do is we'll drag that out just like this. Looking pretty good. Let's change the font to whatever font you wish. I like using as many fonts as I can, uh, or the same font all the time. And we'll go ahead and maybe make this, and we'll make it 35. What we'll also do is we'll center it. And this is going to be a complete white. So we have our text box. And this, because those are two different shades of white, the actual white stands out. And against the contrast or the juxtaposition, it does actually work there too. So we have, let's go over here. We have a text box, we have a button, and we have a label. Let's click the assistant editor, which is right here. And we're going to go and drag everything over. Now the text that I use in my in my tutorials here is bigger because you can see it a little bit better. First things first is that you need to understand when you make anything for Apple or in Xcode, you need to drag the items over here. And this case, we need to take in the data that the user is going to add in. So we need to add in a connection that is an outlet. So we're going to call this txt enter name. I always put txt in front because what that does is that gives it the organizational purposes. So all of my text fields start with txt. Now we don't need to add in an outlet with the button. What we're going to do there is we're going to scroll down to the bottom and you want to make sure that it is action, not outlet. Actions make do things. So if you want your objects to do something, you need to add in the action. I'm going to call this btn print name action. And I always like to put action at the end because, well, it's a lot easier to understand and you don't get confused. Lastly, we're going to go ahead and add in this label here, and we're going to say LBL name. Okay, and we can call this even result or something like that here. Pretty good. Now, outlets take in data, and you can change the properties. Actions do things. So if you wanted to change the, for example, the font color or the font of the print button here, you would have to make that an outlet. Okay, so pretty cool stuff. So what we need to do is we need to say we're going to uh, add in a variable, okay, and this is going to be name or user name, and I always like to add in the small u and then the capitalized other words. This is called camel casing. We're going to force that to be a string, which means it's a character, and we'll just make it equal to nothing like that here. Okay, so we have user name. So when we print the button, what I like to do is I like to add it in a separate function, and we'll call this name printing logic. Okay, and all the function is is a place you can put your code. And to call that function, we're going to go name printing logic. So every time we click the button, it's going to call name printing logic. And that's this function here. And in here, we're going to say LBL name dot text is equal to username. Okay. But we haven't set username. So username is going to be equal to, and we're going to say this is txt enter name dot text. So what, let's go through this here. The user enters the name, then the then the user prints the print name and as you can see it's it will store this txt into username here and you can see there's a little bit of a warning here it wants you to unwrap this what that means is that you need to unwrap this data into username okay so after that you have your username here let's run this here and let's take a look at what this program does. So you can add in your own name here and if you it might take a bit of time for your simulator to load. And if you don't see it at this size, you can always go to window scale and you can scale accordingly. And there's a cool bunch of hotkeys there if you want to go and add those in here. Now, the simulator could take a bit of time to load depending on how good or slow your computer is. The more 
times you run the simulator, the better it gets. The recording software does take up quite a bit of resources, so my computer looks a little bit slower than it actually is when I go and record these screencasts. So again, if you haven't checked out that free course in the description, I highly recommend that you do this while the simulator is loading. So you can enter your name, and I'm just going to go ahead and say Mammoth Interactive, print the name, and look at that here. So why is this important? Well, first of all, I showed you how to set up a very simple app. Second of all, I showed you how to store items in a variable, and variables are kind of like boxes you can put pieces of data into. I showed you how to set up a print button here, or a IB action, and I also showed you how to change the text here. Thanks for listening, and I hope to see you in another course. Please check out that free course in the description. Thank <music> you.